Okay. This screen's a little empty. Uh, maybe I can get your opinion, Davor. Um, what is the screen missing? I feel like it's empty. I got one foreground, a bunch of background trees, and two trees. It's like something needs to be off to the side or something. Maybe like a bush half off screen up here. And I'm also referencing some King's Quest 1 screens here. They, they always look complete, the King's Quest 1 screens, obviously. They're real artists. And they don't look like a blank canvas with some props in it. Like mine do. This is, uh, okay, there's a beach on this side with the log. And then on, immediately to the right, there's, there's a swamp screen. So this is to the left. Nothing really goes off screen here. It's pretty sparse. And then this one. Which obviously won't look like this, but... I find that this kind of empty kind of look works better for AGI than it does SCI, because sprite's so much bigger in SCI. Let's get uh, King's Quest 2 open AGI here. So what was the room? Is this 23? Yeah. So this is the original screen. There, I guess there is a lot more going on in the original. We got like five, six trees and a couple bushes. I should put I just don't want to put too much in one part of the screen unless that's okay. Maybe I'll put a bush right up here on the top of this hill. I don't know. Yes, north, yeah. That's right. That is true. Yeah. So I kind of try to copy the way it uses different tones for the grass. So like highlight up here and then green down here. There was a screen in particular I was looking at or I copied this. I mean, they all kind of have it. I guess it was this one. Yeah, and I took the even took the tree color from this one here for that tree. And kind of the hill, the hilly look. Okay, there's a bit of... I'm going to copy that. I just want to... That went too far. I don't know what I'm doing, I'm just copying what they're doing. There's a bit of contour, I don't know. That little line there, I'm not even sure what that is, if that's supposed to be a grass shade or something casting a shadow. Whatever, I'm gonna leave it. <sighs> yeah, that's true. I could throw some in there. This screen's even got some here, eh? So. I wonder what these are supposed to be. Just clumps of grass? You can walk right over them and... King's Quest 1 here. Well, that's interesting. Okay. Let's try some of that. Um, let's do the blue ones. Uh, right like here. Zoom in a bit. There's a whole bunch of colors here. Kind of a greenish patch. I'm not going to copy this verbatim, but just for, you know. Be 
stupid hit. There we go. Um, maybe some... Oh wait, no. Be nice to have a red and yellow. Let's make a red and yellow. Probably not gonna use that color. Too much. <laughs> Maybe just a tad more of this. It was okay. So, yeah, more holes. I tried. This is actually the first screen. I tried to be a little more creative with the shadow <laughs> size. Every other screen is just kind of boring bubbles around the, like this. This is not very interesting, but okay. But yeah, you you got a point there. Uh, without those shadows, this is a pretty plain looking screen, except for these little overhangs on the left and right. Well, this is kind of an overhang. This is a foreground object. So just. A little more... What do you mean by horizontal? You're just talking about the, the way the shadows look? With the holes? I just need to add some holes. Yeah. Yeah, just the flowers. Okay, right here. Let's try to make some holes here. Um, actually, I should get rid of... Okay. So right here... delete the right parts. Actually, pretty much this whole line I can get rid of up to here. Right there. Okay. Now, some holes. Okay. Maybe I should just redo this whole shadow thing. Just start over. Okay, so. Yeah, because I've, I've been struggling to really convey the sense of a bit of a hill here, and it doesn't help that this tree is perfectly flat at the bottom, <laughs> both of these trees. Um, but the, sh the shape of the shadows could could give that impression, couldn't they? Yeah. Yeah, like even just looking at the shadow, you can tell this this hill kind of dips. It, it, that's the problem, is it? They make it look so natural, and I don't have that ability uh, quite as refined. But, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah.
where Graham walking might ruin the effect. Oh, that's true. Unless I program in a little bit of a difference, maybe walking slower up a hill, as opposed to... That might be overkill, though. Anyway, so, shadows. Let's see. Um, that looks awful. Let's see. I wish I could do freehand, but you can only draw in lines, unfortunately. Something like that. I don't know what I'm doing. Well, these kind of look a little jagged too, I guess. Um, that too big? That's probably too big. Thorsarian music. I keep I keep confusing it for Firehawk music. It's so similar. Okay. Sweet. This feedback is great. I really appreciate it. Having an audience is so much easier than working blind. It's another reason why I like streaming this. Because I get instant feedback on stuff as I'm doing it. Um there's little tiny breaks this in it too. Just a shiny little bit like that. And then if I fill it in, we have a shadow. Okay, this one. I feel like I could picture this having a lot more shadow because of this big tree in this area with like light peeking through holes and have it really seem like it's canopied quite a bit. But then this like highlighted grass area up here looks like the sun is shining straight on it. It might be, do you think that'd be a bit of a too big a disparity between it or like if I just did a whole bunch of At zero. No, it's not. Oh, there we go. Whoops. Okay. Okay. I did like this and left that hole there and then just made a bunch of holes in here yeah in fact I think this is a little too high so I'm going to here on Move it down. some holes uh, 
Um, I'm trying to imagine the shapes of some of these branches. They even have one half on the rock here. Let's see if I can pull that off. Whoops, a little too close to the rock there. There, like that. And I'm gonna take that rock. Okay, where are the coordinates? We got 62, 144, 45, 143. Okay, that's right on the corner, and that's right on the corner. That's all I need. Right here. Select a light gray. fill these in and then that'll look like eh? is that good or what <laughs> I don't know might make it everything appear a little more cohesive I don't know okay I think I want a few more of these little things uh, not too many but not, not too big Let's see what this looks like. Get rid of all these and start over. So fill, 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 fill. Yeah, instinct, yeah, for sure. Of the shadow. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay. Um, I like this light here coming through on the rock. This, this, this hole feels a little too big, but...
Did I delete something? I did delete something. Do 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 Cool. It kind of feels like the shadows should extend beyond the screen, though, because how big the tree is. You know, the picture I'm kind of thinking of, I think it's a picture in King's Quest 1. Is it this one? Yeah, like this has so much canopy. Well, it's supposed to be a dark forest over here, but with these little spits of light peeking through. I think this is what I'm sort of thinking of. This kind of feel. Maybe even, uh, no, no, no. The scene with the rock. This one. There's still quite a lot of sun, though. But there's so much foreground, that's adding to it, too. Okay. Uh, well, scenes with a lot of canopy shadowing still have quite a bit of sun in them, so... Light on the rock, though it makes the screen feel more light. Yeah, on the rock too, yeah. It's one of those little details. Okay, so it just feels too contained. I don't know, maybe I'm just imagining this. It's like, oh yeah, it's nice and canopied until you get to the edges of the screen. So it's just, it feels like this small little area. I kind of want to make all of this shaded. So I think I'm going to do that. Just make these to be holes. And then f totally fill all this in. Sure, each one of these is actually functioning. Okay, and then fill that and fill that and fill that. In. Yeah, I, I like that a little better. Is that too much holes? Are the holes too weird looking? The deep canopy to the left. That's this one? Yeah, the one with the squirrel and the walnuts, I think. That's a lovely one. I like the texture of the tree, the different colors they're using. It's got the red and gray on the left side and just a hint of the black and brown on the right here. So you can see where kind of the shade is happening. Something looks too weird. It's like it should be a little bit more jagged. second shadow here I think looks weird. It looks like water drops. Like from a splash. <laughs> it's bugging me. It's too round.
Yeah, that looks more like a branch, doesn't it? These two still f annoy me. Uh, I'm just going to get rid of this one. Although I like the branch. Maybe I'll just make it a bit more jagged. That's better. I'm happier with that. Slats, hello. Nice to see ya. Hmm. So, I should probably move these ones. Probably. Some of their shadows are almost just single line draws. That's true. Yeah, it feels like too much. I think I'm going to get rid of this one or move it. Oh, it was a big piece I chopped out. Yeah, okay. Yeah, let's just forget about that. And there's there should be more towards the edges here, right? Well, like you say, I can just use line draws after. I should just do that. Uh, go down to here. Go like... Um, So, These have only a little bit. I got too many holes. a way to there we go I can resize it there we go I love these functions This is the kind of uh, style shadow that I was doing in other screens. Mostly a circle with little peaks on the edges, like like this type of deal, or even this. 
which is mostly shaded with just some peaks coming out. Um, the screen always seemed weird to me too. There's something wrong with it, like too much shade or something, not enough variety. Maybe I can use some other colors on the grass to denote some contour, I don't know. This doesn't even have any. <laughs> leave uh, light holes peeking through this one this one does on the edges and little peeks through the holes there I really wanted this scene to feel like it was a canopy uh, same with grandma's cottage here shadow on the fence although these flowers don't get much Sun <laughs> actually had the sun casting from the from like the camera position towards the back and then I realized that doesn't fall in line with the rest of the screens in the game so I had to change the whole shadow the light peeking through on the roof here and then the shadow kind of ends there maybe I should run that shadow straight down here to make a little more sense down like this and then a little over I don't know. Well, let's see how it looks. With Graham walking around in it. I love how the stake is in exactly this right spot it should be. Also want to do the. Uh... Oh, that's interesting. Oh, I left the. Whoops, <laughs> I left the control color on when I was drawing the flowers and the. So I can't walk past the flowers either. Nope. Do not walk on the flowers. Too pretty. Whoops. Yeah, there. There are a lot of trees to screen. Screens with trees. <laughs> Higher ups are overwhelming our training system. Oh, really? Yeah, let's go back to these and fix that. Roll off. There we go. Rebuild. That's a big tree, big redwood. <laughs> now we can walk on the grass. I wonder if I should add a priority to that though, so it looks like he's walking, because I'm just walking on top of it. How does King's Quest 1 do that? Where's that screen with the flowers? So there's no, just these, this big patch of uh, purple flowers. It's the only thing that has some priority to it. Because it's so thick. This doesn't have any at all, it just he just walks over it, so I guess it's fine. Yeah, good luck, Deluxe Tux. Flower Lady from Breath of the Wild. 
Perfect. That was great. Scream at the tree looks a little off, maybe because the tree has dark values, but nothing else seems to. Uh, this one? Which one are you talking about? Scream at the tree. They all have trees, yes. Are you talking about the King's Quest 1 one or one of mine? Because I'll try to fix it. I tried to get mostly shaded here with just a bit more black contour lines on the back for shading. Because it is shaded by the canopy. And just a little bit of solid red on the right side. This tree I kind of just did the like I did the rest of my trees. Maybe it should be a little more flat. Because I know like these are pretty flat. I tried to copy the texture of these two trees for this one. Kind of the style. And the color. This though looks a little more flat, eh? Like it's not A, eh? said the Canadian. Um Maybe I should copy this for this tree. I'm also sick of these like boring tree trunks. I just this looks way more interesting. Got more shape to it. I don't know. I was talking about the screen you had mentioned looked off. Oh, uh, four, this one. Tree has dark values, but nothing else seems to. Talking about this tree? Did I kind of put some red on this one? Um,. Yeah, this one I just figured was like a different type of tree with different kind of barks, just to give it some variety. And I was like, these are like the only two birch trees in the game. <laughs> I just wanted some variety here. But... Yeah, I don't know. I, I This is back when I did way too much black squiggly lines on the trees. I think. The thing I don't like about King's Quest 1 Streets is that screen with the black sky facing outlines on the upper trunk. Black sky facing outlines. Oh, the black sky facing outlines. Uh, yeah, it kind of looks like cell shaded type of thing, doesn't it? Like, I, you'd replace these lines with a brighter color, right? I, I get that for sure. That's probably what makes it feel flatter, to be honest. Like right here, the sun is highlighting these trees, so it doesn't have a black outline, but this kind of has black on the right side. Um, let's try to mess with that, see what happens. How do they draw this tree anyway? Look, it's like they extended the width of the tree. They were using tablets too, like uh, to draw these Ken Williams uh, on Facebook or somewhere uh, mentioned the kind of tablets that they used in conjunction with their tools. And uh, it was a really old model style tablet like for drawing and it hooked right into their picture editor. So they were able to do a lot more convincing stuff. And I actually have one of the, some of the original tools, and there's like functions to use with the tablet and everything. I don't have the tablet, so I can't use it. That's one thing Sierra had over us. Otherwise, we just have to be super patient, patient with the mouse. So the layers of leaves too are something else. They got what? What is this brown and green here? And they're outlining all with different colors, and then fill in with different colors to look like layers of tree branches. And here, see they... Okay, it looked like, yeah, they extended it a little bit. So it was like, it was this thin, and then they... Come on. They extended the width of the tree a little bit. 
with a black line. So that, that line right there, I can probably just change. Let's see, change it to, oh, look at this palette. Straight up Argyle. <laughs> um, let's see, brown. I'm going to change it back to black right there. What does that look like? Brown is, seems like the wrong choice, but it's kind of neat. Maybe gray. Dark gray, that is. Where are is There is no dark gray. Oh, yes, there is right here. Yeah, it looks a little funky. <laughs> Far be it for me to correct Sierra's art. <laughs> That lines would probably be better as pure brown or perp or pure dark red. Yeah, dark red, really. Eh? There is no pure dark red in this palette. It's the thing you only get. Uh, oh, two, three, four, five, six. They kept changing the palette throughout this picture. That is not common. Usually the practice is to set the palette at the beginning. Because here we have the solid green and blues up here. Did they change it? Maybe they didn't change it. Maybe I'm just crazy. Okay, dark green. Dark green, black. Oh, maybe I'm just crazy. <clears throat> Yeah, because the, the kind of uh, way to do it is to set the palette at the beginning. Add whatever colors you need at the beginning so you can use them all later instead of changing the palette multiple times throughout the drawing process. Because it makes uh, changing palettes way different. And I just try to do it as a good habit, good exercise, just in case I want to use different palettes. Like this doesn't have any different palettes, but... Looks pretty horrible. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I used to do that too, Slats, but I just... I try not to anymore. So if I need a color, it's easy to just change it right away, but if I need a color, I'll be like, oh, I need this color, and then I'll have to decide where it goes, and I'll go back to the beginning and add it in that spot that I don't use delete the original one and go back to what I was doing. <clears throat> so the earliest screen I had ever done was this one. Did I did I keep any? Cuz some I found sometimes it confuses the drawing process. Although I don't remember how. Maybe I'm mixing it up with another memory. It's been so long. Yeah, it looks like I wised up and went back and edited it on this one. I mean, if the end result is is going to look the way it is in game, it doesn't really matter. Um, but I always just try to prepare just in case any time I want to use. It's just good practice, I think. If I want to use multiple palettes for like day, night cycles or something. Because then you're only working, all you have to do is, okay, I just have to change these colors. But then if you're changing the palette throughout the process, those pal those palette those extra palettes get overridden, right? So say if I want to change this one to uh let's see here. Let's copy all of this to one. Okay. Do okay, delete. Uh, let's look at this in palette one. Okay. Oh, didn't it save? Okay. I deleted the wrong one, probably. Okay. So if I wanted to make this, like, nighttime... <clears throat> um, let's see here. Turn the lights down. Tint a little more bluish. That's a little strong, but... Sure, just just for argument's sake. 
this would only replace the colors on the first palette right, right? So then after, if you've got palette changes during the process, it's going to overwrite that with the daytime colors and it's, you know, it's so it's, yeah. Ooh. I'm looking forward to that. Iridescent sea stuff. In the Tower Realm, you mean? That's going to look good. All right, I think I'm going to just leave this screen for now. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to redraw that sprite, though, for... Uh... Oh, the other thing I wanted to do was... I want to try to copy that hill code that King's Quest 1 has, where you walk up and then down the hill. I think that would be awesome for this screen. Uh, what's some screens that do that? This one probably definitely does it, right? Blue. Control. Yeah, so there's a light blue on the perimeter of the hill. Light blue. What does it do in the script? TL. Blue. Can't find it. Um, blue. Oh, you know what? The colors aren't going to be here because I decompiled this game. Okay. Uh, north is room 43. Whoops. 43. What song is this from? Oh, it's Space Quest 4. Space Quest Historians, Blue Frogs. There you go. That's I like that intro. I never heard that before. I haven't actually listened to this yet. The, uh... Blue Frogs, Space Quest 4 reorchestrated soundtrack. <laughs> if you're going to stream that, let me know when you do it. I I uh, would definitely love to see that in process, how you figure that out. Um, whoops. Where is the code for this? Is there any, uh... Climb hill. Here we go. If ego's on control... I just don't know what these colors are, but I can find out. Okay, let's just open a script for a second. SCI. Okay, O200 was blue. Okay. CTL blue. O200. And if ego script is not climb hill, set ego script to climb hill. Let's go to climb hill. Here's the climb hill script. So we've got a procedure two that probably means game takes control. Yeah, user can control zero, can input zero, means you can't type, you can't control, and sets ego's motion to zero. Zero means something. That motion zero. I have to bring up the SCI documentation again. Documentation. Set motion. What is set motion? Um, okay, it's going to be act, actor. Um, set motion. 
How do I find what all the set motion parameters are? It's inherited from motion. Okay, here we go. Motion. We have wander, d-path, move to, approach, orbit, follow, polypath, track, chase, jump. So what happens when you feed it a zero? Does that, does that mean just whatever it was? I'm not sure. I wasn't able to find the COTL one anywhere, sadly. What's COTL? Yeah, I find all that stuff fascinating, though. Like, I'm, I'm surprised so many people watch me do this stuff. <laughs> but it's interesting. And I'm sure this is interesting to some people, too. Which is why they watch it, but... Yeah, man. I'm, I'm interested. Yeah. Well, even that is valuable, I think, to watch. If it's just trial and error. Like, watching somebody figure something out after... It's almost like... Solving a puzzle in an adventure game yourself for, and taking a really long time to do it. Um, although watching somebody do it when you know the answer could be maddening, but in this case, nobody knows the answer, so it's fascinating. I think that's the difference. Oh, Conquest of Longbow. Kind of thing that could have, like, yeah, mm -hmm. remastering of. What do you mean by- was there someone remastering Longbow? I'm- I'm lost. I'm a little bit lost. Or are you talking about just the game? Well, it's interesting that set motion can be zero. I'm just not sure what that means. Okay, anyway, let's go back to... This. So, yeah. Procedure... Script 0, Procedure 2... Takes control away from the player, and Procedure 3... Gives controller back. It also changes the cursors, the weight cursor. Makes sense. Menu bar state 0 means you can't access the menu bar. GTL hands off. GTL. What is hands off? GTL. What does that stand for? GTL. Turn looper? Interesting. TL hands off. GTL hands off. Oh, global TL hands off. Okay. TL hands off, TL user control, TL user input. What does the TL mean? Oh, it's assigning the global hands off to TL hands off, and then it changes the global hands off, so it keeps the global one in memory here for whatever reason. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, back to room 38. This is unused music, it looks like, for uh, Space Qu the Space Quest 2 VGA remake by Isaac Lundgren. Very uh, closely parodying the, the uh, Star Wars Cantina music. I'm not sure where this would have been in the game. <laughs> you mentioned this dude who had done a lot of AGI MT32 reinstrumentations. Oh. AGI? I mentioned that? I know Tom Lewandowski from Quest Studios did a, a couple and reinterpreted some AGI tracks in MT32, but I don't think Conquest the Longbow is one of them. Oh, VGA, not AGI. Oh. <laughs> yeah. No, that was Tom Lewandowski, Quest Studios. He did not actually remaster the Conquest the Longbow soundtrack. There's a couple he didn't do. He didn't do... He did Conquest of Camelot.
There is one here. What is all the eight? It is Quest Studios. I have it right here. I, th I thought he didn't do it. Um, let me see if I can find the link. Um, yeah, it's not there. On the, the Quest Studios archives doesn't have it. But it, I might have gotten it from the Wayback Machine. I'll just zip it up, man, and give it to you. Because there's some from the, the original website that still hasn't made it onto the Quest Studios archive. And I had to go into the Wayback Machine to find them all. Um, which is kind of clunky to navigate because it's an old website and the links don't work properly. Um, but I managed to find my way around and, and get it. Yeah. It's not here. I'll zip it up for you. Let's see here. Add to archive. QS OST. Um, let's see here. 76 megs. It's all uh, OGG files, so they're not big. Okay, when that's done, I'll post the link to a, a Google Drive link, and everyone can download it. Anyone who's here. This stuff shouldn't be... shouldn't disappear into the void. Okay. Climb hill of script. I think I might just copy this whole block, but let's see here. So it takes control away from the player. If G Ego Looper is disposed. That's an interesting code block, comparison block. Uh, if Thing. Ego legal bits zero it means he can walk past some things he's usually not allowed to. I guess I can't remember exactly what this does. It's the naming convention sometimes is backwards from what you'd expect it to be. Legal bits. Doesn't really explain it either on the documentation. All right, it's uploaded. Let me see here. Get link. Anyone with this link? Copy link. All right. Here you go. Grab it, anybody. Nice. Yeah, that'd be sweet. Enjoy. Um, okay. Fits loop to three, which is... That's the north-facing loop makes the priority zero so he can walk behind everything cycle walk move to set motion uh, whatever his x is and move him to 55 y 55 which is the bottom of this blue right here so when he hits this it takes over and his priority is, you can't control him, and he walks all the way down to the bottom of the hill. It's 
interesting to work out how this happens. So and then procedure zero one, what does that do? Uh, a lot of technical stuff. Does this reset? Set, oh, this is this is the setup ego. So it resets the ego back to what it should be. All the defaults, because um, it's it's directly setting some information here forever, permanently, and it's got to give the control, give that control back to the game to set the loops properly to based on where you're walking and everything. And I think that's what procedure zero one is. Uh, let's double check. Like every room at the beginning of the room has. I could be wrong. Uh, set up ego. Set up ego right here. Which is in the main script. Yep. Set up ego is the first one. Set up actor, program control, player control. So these are the procedures that are released globally to the rest of the game. Yeah, um... This one here. So it's when you walk over the hill and you walk down. It does... King's Ghost 1 does this on a bunch of screens. Uh, there's a little script to handle it. As soon as you get to the... to the edge of the blue, the top of the hill, the game takes over, you can't control it anymore, and it walks him automatically all the way down to 55, and once he reaches 55, which is the end of this priority line, it changes the room. Gives control back, sets the room. So it gives control back and sets up ego before the room change. That's interesting. It sets the new room to whatever the north room is. Global 2 north. Global 2. Oh, oh, so you can access... Okay, I've been hard-coding room numbers, but you can just access... This would be G-Room, then. In the template game, anyway. G-Room, yeah. Global 2 is G-Room. So you can reference G-Room and then North, and it will do whatever the North, the room north of that room is, which is set up here, at the beginning of every room. It sets the picture, which is the script number, same number as the script number, 3. North is room 45, east is 4, south is... So that's just... Okay, I gotta, I gotta change a lot of stuff now. Now that I've figured out how to reference that. Okay. Alright. Excited to copy this now. So... Room 3... This is the wrong one. Okay. Climb a hill of scripts. Let's do it. Room 3. No, no, no. Room 23. So I gotta copy this in the priority. The hill. So the priority colors we have... Actually, control colors. So I'd usually just make it purple. When he hits the purple, he changes the room. I'm not gonna do that anymore. I have to look at this a little bit. It's blue, yes. <clears throat> Which ends directly when green starts. Okay. So 55 is the line where green starts. Right? That's 62. Oh, 55. Okay, it's a little higher. I see. But the priority goes all the way down to 62. Or, no, 63. <clears throat> so what does that look like here? Where's 55 here? Five is here. Okay, I'm gonna have to do lower than 55 in this case. 
because this hill right here ends at 59. So what if we do 61 instead? That's what I'm going to do. Ah, uh, get out of here. Okay, here we go. Uh. Program control. One set up ego. Dispose and that should work fine. Yep, climb hill's not used anywhere yet. Yet, SCI companion. Yet, it will be. So, said states. So let's take a look at that other block again. So when does climb hill trigger? If G ego is on control. It actually passes a one into it, but I never do that. This is in the do it method. It's all this is wrapped in a condition statement. Okay. I, I don't use condition much. I'm, it looks like just a collection of if statements. Maybe it kind of takes the place of a state machine, a switch statement, that is. All right, anyway, I need this. Condition. Okay, this will be in the room's do it method. If. Song is so wonderfully 90s. That electric piano pad. The only thing that would make it complete is if there was a fretless bass. <laughs> to what is O2 again? O2 is CTL blue. So that's light blue. Let's replace that. Okay. So I think it's implemented. All I have to do now is draw the priority and Okay, let's do priority first. Disable visual. Okay, 
I'm gonna do this right to 63. When I draw that hill, I'm going to draw in priority for blue. There we go. Yeah, 61 I think is still a good spot. So instead of purple now, purple should be light blue. No fill. Take a look at it. Got a control color about three average pixels thick. Four. One, two, three, five. Five average pixels thick. Notice the lines don't really mesh up anywhere. The priorities and the visual and the the control lines are slightly higher. I wonder if that matters. I guess we'll find out. What I can do is. Take these draw commands. B. Again, I don't need disable visual and priority at all. Move it down an average of five pixels and then fill it in. Better than redrawing it. So, my baby rescue cat, who is the only one that could fit under the couch, did I discover that she can crawl inside the couch? Uh oh and walk around in the frame and scratch at stuff inside. We had a cat that discovered that. I know exactly what that what you're going through. It took us like half an hour to get her out. <laughs> right. See, the problem here is this blue now is already 
at the line. Well, it's one above the line. 62. 61 is what we want, so. If I do this. Fill. Uh-oh, that went off. I wish we could do this like uh, Photoshop or something. Hold shift to draw a straight line. Oh, we can! Never mind. <laughs> you can hold shift and draw a straight line. I did not know that. Until this very moment. Oh, look! It shows the final output down here. What becomes of the draw commands if you... See, the fill command will spill out if I draw it to here. But if I put it right to the end, it contains it. That's so cool. SCI Companion is so great. Okay, I think this is all I need. We have the priority, we have the control. Just check this again. Yeah, it's about, it might even be two pixels high. So the priority on this line is about 25. The control is 24. It's one pixel, so that's fine. I think that's all we need. Let's try it. No errors in compiling. Here we go. I'm compiling the wrong game. <laughs> Whoops. Get steak, just for fun. There we go. Didn't work. Why is the music still playing? Yeah, it didn't work at all. Oh, I didn't save the picture. And I did not compile the script. No, the picture hasn't been saved. There we go. Picture saved. Rebuild resources. Did I rebuild these resources? I did. I just uh, altered my copy of King's Quest 1. I'm going to have to rebuild that now. <laughs> rebuild that from... The, uh, rebuild. Re... Um, because there's duplicate files, and I don't want this version of King's Quest 1 uh, altered. And I've just rebuilt the resources and deleted all the extra files, because I thought this was my game. Oh well. I can just copy it again and decompile it, re-decompile it. So... I do want to get rid of this code for the purple, because I'm not using that anymore. Alright, now let's try it. Oops. Nope, don't want to do that. Fade out. 23. Here we go. Woo! Nice. It works, guys. Great. Oh, that's a problem. I have to make him appear lower so if he comes from the north he will be at 62 three i'm so pleased with this I man just ripped off the, their code but still Let's slow this down a bit Great. That's awesome. Just a nice little detail. You can really gives depth to the picture too. And now when I walk over here, it doesn't automatically send me back up. Cool. 
campaign really does have awesome features. Absolutely. Oh, you, oh, you still, yeah. Um, companion is great. It has the picture editor has some extra features like being able to draw ellipses and circles. Studio can't do that, as far as I know. I don't have a shortcut to Studio. Hang on. Tools of CI. No, I tools of CI Studio CS. Whoops. Darn it. Studio 3, Studio, Nancy. So here's SCI Studio. I started King's Quest 2 with this. <clears throat> it's not going to be able to... Okay, yeah, so you've only got line, short line, which isn't even used in Companion, and tiny line. Near pen, close pen. It kind of takes all of the draw commands and lays them right out whereas companion doesn't i think sierra's original picture editor used these automatically when it called for it so if you draw a line that is short it'll automatically do it with this tool retroactively after you've drawn it whereas these tools just kind of draw whichever one you pick and you have to pick the right one if you if you're if you're worried about saving file size that is we don't worry about that in 2021 but um yeah if you you probably know this. I'm just I'm just showing everybody else for their benefit. Companion has a circle tool, which you need to select their color for. And you can make it any size, and it ends up being circle. But I think when it comes down to it, it's a collection of draw of uh, line draws. So if I save this and reopen it, it'll this will be line draws instead of a circle, which is kind of nice think you can uh, yeah if you hold shift it'll be a perfect circle the only problem with this is it doesn't take into account aspect ratio correction which or does it because I'm already set to aspect ratio correction right so if I hold shift that's a perfect circle and I am in aspect correction correction mode uh, game properties Use original aspect ratio. Let's turn that off. And now let's do this. Oh, cool. So it, it detects which aspect ratio correction your version you're using and it adjusts the perfect circle code accordingly. Bravo, Phil Fortier. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. Reduce the. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Good. Companion will too, then. Awesome. Oh, with Studio, it will. Awesome. That's cool. Yeah, yes. Definitely the most important. So that's really cool. If you wanted to do a widescreen game in EGA and have perfect circles, just uh, make sure the game property says no aspect correction, and it'll do perfect square pixels. But if you do, and you want a full screen, like the classic games... The circle will automatically adjust. That's great. That's such a nice attention to detail there. Awesome. Okay, so that's... I, I'm going to call this screen done, I think. If anyone has any more suggestions. I'm pretty happy with it. Pretty happy with it. I kind of put these flowers on an angle, so it kind of looks like a hill, but... Maybe it wasn't necessary. Awesome. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was going to redraw the sprite for the stake. Let's do that. Uh, room 23. Stake. View 43. Here it is. This is the original. You gotta make it bigger than this, though. We want to put this on the screen. Where'd it go?
All right, I need some visual references for this. Steak. Obviously not a finely crafted and engineered one, just something that looks... I think they replaced it, yeah, in King's Quest 2 Plus, they replaced the stake with a fence post. A pointy fence post. Which ended up not being used for that. Same reason. Because Dracula, a.k.a. Kaldor in King's Quest 2 VGA, is actually a good guy in the end. Spoilers. I guess there's not much to it. Just a pointy piece of wood, right? I think I want to change the orientation, though. Instead of lying this way, I want them to lie this way. Maybe across there like that. Um, I should just redraw it from scratch. New view. All right, let's, let's see here. Brown. Big, but we'll find out. Pointy enough. The great thing about drawing sprites is that it doesn't have to be, um, it's no draw commands, you can just draw over anything you want. Yeah, that's huge. Definitely gotta resize that. But that might be a good version for the inventory. 
view though. Grow it so we can fit. Um, can we resize this? Can we resize views? Flip. Same commands for picture commands don't work for resizing. Well, I suppose I can just take it to paint shop. Uh, make sure the colors are 16. And resize. So 43, 22. So we'll do how wide is the inventory? 41. So we'll do 39 or 39, 37. Still too much. Um, 30, 40, For this one, it's got to be shrunk quite a bit. So let's do 80, 80, um, 60, 60, 70, 70. Best to know is copy and change the size and pay and paste. It will ask if you want to fill the news. Yeah. To be a little sixty hundred, yeah. Okay. Origin point. Where's the origin? Okay, again, bottom in the middle, that's fine. Let's see here if we can clean this up. Well, that's a pretty big, nice big steak. It's a little, just a little too big though. Yeah, if it catches the eye. Want it somewhere so it looks like it's standing out. Like if I put it right there, it doesn't just look like a stick or something, right? That look that would catch your eye. Maybe on the rock, eh? Now that. Looks totally invisible there. Error. On the rock. That way the rock could be a central... Yeah, that looks... What is that? It's on the rock, it's, it doesn't disappear like it would in the tree. I need to rotate it a bit. Better way to rotate. Oh, neat! If you hold control, it'll stretch the other way. 
I didn't know that. And if you hold control and shift... Never mind. Not sure what's different about holding shift or control. Oh! Oh, it resizes! Holding shift resizes. That's how you do it in Companion. If I hold shift here, I can resize it to whatever I want. Good to know. Good to know. I think this might just be a little bit too busy. Uh, yeah, let's let's take this back to basics here. Whoops. Oh, I got put that on. Working on Betrayed Alliance. Oh, nice. While well, you work too. Mm -hmm. Nice. Check it out. Very nice work slots. I like, I really like how you use uh, dithering patterns for lighting like this. And your evergreen trees are just perfect. I like how they're everything too. It's very storybook. And the, the, the colors used for the rocks too, the dithering patterns are really nice. Well done. As usual. Yeah, it's amazing. It, in fact, I think having only 16 colors kind of even more projects someone's individual style. Like I know having more colors and possibilities in certain ways anyway. I know having more colors and possibilities makes for infinite combinations, but but everyone does have a different style and when you're so limited, it it just comes out more somehow because there's less to work with. It really pushes those differences. Yeah, it looks really nice, man. Great work. This is looking a little AGI, so I need I need some different. I don't like that though. Oh, see, it's these random lines that look weird. I want it to stand out, but I don't want it to be, you know.
yeah, that definitely looks visible. So if I put it right at 81146. I love that tool too, to be able to put sprites on the screen. You can get exact coordinates very easily. 81146. You don't see that here. Great. Here's to be an ordinary tent stake. I like it. Happy with it. Screen's a little boring, but whatever. This screen's done. I'm gonna it's down here. So we got this tree with the screen with this hidden sign and another beach screen over here a little bit more interesting beach screen i might go back actually and redo this screen i like the difference in the log i've got here and it took a lot to program in having what my uh priority is like really it shouldn't you shouldn't be purple all the way up here but i had to program so when he's standing within the brown the brown control color here, it changes his... Because if you're on the same line, you appear behind it, so... Anyway, there's another stream entirely that I went over that and did that, but... Because this is just a... Uh, anyway, this is just kind of a traceover of the original AGI screen, and I don't like doing traceovers. I want to reimagine it. I, I must. I was just feeling a little lazy this, today. But not today, when I did this screen, anyway. This one was a traceover... This one was a traceover. All the beach screens so far have been traceovers. This one obviously was the very first one. And I, I kind of want to push the more reimagined aspect of this game, because that's what I liked about King's Quest 1. Everything was reimagined. If I traced over this, it would this would be a small little pond compared to the large lake it's supposed to be with Graham's original AGI size. And here's flat screen. Still really like it. I'm gonna reference King's Quest 1 again heavily for that cave screen. Or maybe some King's Quest 4 too. That had a that had a nice uh, cave look. This one will be interesting to reimagine. Fallen tree log was broken down. That'd be interesting. Here's one that uh, Gumby made for me. I just gotta. I'm gonna get rid of the fills and change the uh, colors and the shading, but otherwise, it's a nice looking screen. And the shadows obviously are all wrong, come from the wrong direction. I could start by. Uh, just mirroring this whole screen though. There's no priority setup either, I have to do that. This one was traced over, but I like it. The bridge was, would be huge if I went by the original AGI. Well, in the original AGI game, the bridge is huge, and this one is smaller, and I kind of like it smaller. And it's still kind of iconic. Like, oh yeah, this screen, you know, it doesn't look too, too different. I'm not happy with how I do rocks. Like it looks like this. The jaggedness is all right. The outlines, but the fill-ins looks really fake. Not a lot of depth to it. Like I tried to put depth, but I didn't really succeed. A lot of work to do there. Really pleased with how the. Uh, this tree still looks really gimpy, but it's better than it was. <laughs> the Colonel's Bequest Lantern Breakdown Stream. Oh, yes. Yeah, that was pretty incredible how they did that. 
This is one has a real good rock screen west of the Witch's Forest. Yes. Where, where you come out of the cave, right? And the condor comes down. Rocks are hard. <laughs> good one. Didn't even realize. <laughs> Made a pun, didn't even know it. I think um, Space Quest Historian Trolls was showcasing this on his uh, channel and uh, the little video I made. And one thing he said about the screen is it looks nice, but there's a lot of dithering. And I'm not afraid of dithering. Like, I like dithering. But I think there's a point. He's got a point here for this screen. There's it's just everywhere you look, there's dithering. Maybe if I use more flat colors on the walls, at least. I'll keep the pews and the, the kind of this de detail here, but the walls, maybe they should be more flat. And there's something to be said for uh, strong um, solo colors, you know. Solid colors, that's, what, that's the term I'm looking for. I still need to make a little animation for the candelabra here. Which, maybe I can just do that now. So views, let's change this to list. Um, what room is that? Church. Sierra kind of had a habit of naming their, numbering their views based on their room number. So like, the reviews in room 71, the reviews would be like 711, 712, 713, 714. So let's go with view 711. If that's not already taken. Okay, the 700s are not taken at all, so that's great. Pick 71. I just need to do this. You. And. Oh, what happened there? I guess that's part of the wall. Okay. All right, I want to add to this um, some lighting changes on the wall behind it, so I got to make this bigger. Um, this is super useful, I gotta say. Then I can do this. Um, let's see here. What it's got to be is... Come on. I want to get this entire circle of... So this is 
54 by 45. Maybe that whole thing should just be a sprite. Whole stinking thing. This whole thing. Let's do the whole thing over again. So, well, that's perfect. Yes, yeah, grow it to fit. No idea if what I'm thinking here is going to actually work or not.
Okay. See you later, Slats. Thanks, Slats. Have a good one.
see what this looks like. Too bad. Speed I want. What does that look like? Get lunch, or I could just eat more of the cheesecake we made. <laughs> Baking is dangerous. That's true, they aren't. Uh, okay, let's fix that. And that one. That frame right there. That frame. I'll have to extend that frame outward a bit. I like how it follows the uh, direction of the flame. So when the flame's big over here, it's brighter over here. It shrinks and then it starts pointing over here and the light goes away from that side. Not like that though. This little one black pixel sticking out, okay. There. Ooh, nice, Davor. <laughs> Fed that in. It's at one thirty seven, one thirty one. If I want it to animate, so we'll do cycle speed. Is cycle speed a property or a function? A method, whatever. I think it's a property. Yeah. Cycle speed two. Let's see what that looks like first. Set cycle forward. Okay. Very slow. This is normal walking speed. It's too. S Let's 
Do it a little faster than that. One. Can't get much faster. And you can't use decimals. Decimal values. Okay, that's better. And we're playing high speed. Is it a little too much? I think I'll live with it. it. Looks good. Well, I'm getting ready to wrap up here. Just want to take another look around. Oops. Yeah, there's something wrong with the scripting here. That was the swamp, the falling into... The, that's one thing I didn't finish before I went on my vacation break. I had to still work that out. Oh, and there's still some jumpiness going on there. So good. So good. Okay, and there's the stake. Get any closer. I should do that within 15 pixels, maybe. Distance to stake, 15 pixels. That probably will feel a little better. So I'm going to do a said statement for said book, said statement. in the original AGI. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a joke about that in King's Quest 2 VGA. Mallet. Okay, here it is. 23, of course. We already know the number. 23. There's a stake leaning against a tree. Print, look, tree, area. You are too far away. There are really no, uh... Hmm. Not carrying it. Okay. So there's a stake leaning against a tree. I'll add that. I don't need you anymore. Uh, what's or again? Brackets. Stake. Tree. Area. Or 
Wait now, what was the code for? Hang on a second. Okay, in square brackets. I do this. Does that work? I gotta look up the parser again. Hey, Critical Buzz. Good morning, how are you? nothing on the companion website documentation for parser stuff because it's all SCI zero and all it's only documentation it's only documentation applies to SCI 1.1 I can't remember the specifics I think this will work I can't remember what exclamation mark does do you remember slats isn't here he doesn't know well he might know but he's not here um Maybe there's some in King's Quest 1. I, I believe square brackets are... means it's optional. Or just comma. Yeah, I don't need brackets. Print. Do, 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 do. There's a stake leaning against the tree. This tells it, okay, it responds to these three nouns after typing look, or the, uh, so stake tree area will give the same response. If it's in square bra brackets, it means this is optional. So it's either these three nouns or just look. I think that's how it works. We're going to find out. are too far away yeah okay let's try it and then I'll probably finish with this I work in about 45 minutes look many trees shade your way okay that's overriding it look, area. you don't see that here heavily wooded area so the dang does that mean this is Big tree area. Oh no, I need that first. This separates the uh, sentence structure. The forward slash. Okay, that'll do it. Big leaning against the tree. There we go. There we go. Okay. Get staked. Not close enough. 
still not close enough. I think I should be closer there. Do 20 pixels, I guess. How am I not close enough? I, yeah, it's got to be closer than that. Right, 30. No, 25? It's from the origin point, right? So. Come on. <clears throat> I want to be able to get it from here. Okay, finally. Try it again. Oh, it's gonna be like super far away now. <laughs> oh well. I wonder if there's an X distance to and a Y distance to, rather than just distance to. Maybe I should change the origin point to be the center instead of... instead of the bottom of it. Ten pixels away. Kind of a side effect, but whatever. <laughs> okay, and I've so we've implemented the stake position, implemented this hill walking code, which I love. King's Quest One. Okay, that was a little weird. Oh. Wait a sec. Hang on, hang on. So the blue priority is actually over the priority line. Whereas in King's Quest 1, I don't think it goes that high. No, it does go all the way down. It goes way over too. How does that control that? What's zero 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 two? Navy. Okay, so there's another block of code I need to copy over, it looks like. If Ego is on control color Navy. And Ego's priority is one. And the script has not been called. And, and the procedure 12 is not 48. What's procedure 12? Ooh. What is procedure 12?
Print don't have it. Start cutscene, end cutscene. Hmm. Global 150. This looks like a bit flagger. All right, let me take a look at something. So that is. How many times is that used? It's used quite a bit, and only on screens with a hill, it looks like. Only two screens? There's got to be more screens than that that use a hill. Room 19 uses it. must be some other game specific thing and it doesn't apply here so I'm just gonna ignore it oh there's a lot of catch-alls here So, oh, it's for the goat as well. Okay, so we don't need to worry about the goat. So there's two cases here for Ego. Um, so we have him hitting the light blue. That's when it triggers Climb Hill. Uh, switch. Use Alter Ego Edge Hit. One, two, three, four. Why is that there? Interesting. What's Alter Ego? So look into that. It looks like it's for something else though. Um, so we need these two. I just don't know what this procedure does. It's not in this screen. So I'm just going to copy these. Procedure 12 again, right there. That must handle if the... Oh no, that is the goat, yeah. Alright, let's copy that. Use the condition statement just for fun. Okay, so this handles if he's over the line and it sets his priority. If the screen, yeah, let's try it. That might fix it. There we go. So if he's on the blue and the script hasn't triggered it actually changes his priority to green it keeps it green even though it shouldn't be because we're above the blue line but it changes to black as soon as he gets over the hill great now we're done okay great fanfare music for finishing all right i'm gonna call it here thanks everyone for showing up and everyone on YouTube, if you're watching this, thanks for watching. Um, 
if you're watching on YouTube and you want to watch these live, you can check out twitch.tv slash musically inspired. I stream so far consistently every Tuesday mornings at 9 a.m. Central. Um, it'll be in the description anyway. Um, but everyone who showed up, thanks. Dave Orr, Critical Buzz, Deluxe Tux, R4YCH underscore, <laughs> uh, Slats, Slat Studios, who was here, uh, Adrillion for lurking, everyone, everyone who's here, you're all awesome. Appreciate you. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time. Thursday, um, <laughs> my Thursday streams have been very sporadic. I'm trying to do it later than the morning so that, um, some people across the pond or in another part of the world can can watch live at a different at a certain time but um yeah we'll figure something out i'll announce it mm -hmm. i'll post it on twitter or something great mm -hmm. sorry phone's going off okay thanks guys we did it chad we did it we did it Be feel proud see ya